When I was working on designing devices for radiation measurement, knowledge of injection molding was crucial. But when I was working on designing industrial burners, the injection molding was not important at all, but sheet metal manufacturing was. However, CAD and engineering drawing knowledge were crucial for both roles. In this video, I'll use example of a conveyor to show you which subjects to focus on during your studies to really prepare for a career in mechanical design engineering. Hello Newtonians, Mate here. During my studies, I struggled to understand why I was learning certain subjects. Often it was unclear to me how different subjects complement each other. Now, with a bit more experience under my belt, I've pieced together the puzzle. I want to help you do the same, so you don't have to wonder like I did. Here is the deal. Becoming a mechanical design engineer is all about applying what you learn to solve real life problems. But let's be honest, it's tough to get excited about something that you don't see the point of it, right? So let me show you the point of it. First up, we will talk about mathematics. Mathematics serves as a fundamental backbone of all engineering disciplines, providing the essential tools for analysis and problem solving in mechanical design. Mastering mathematics will make your studies and your professional life much easier. Even though you will probably not use advanced math in day-to-day -day work, understanding it will be crucial for performing advanced calculation like finite element method. Statics. Statics focus on analyzing and understanding forces in equilibrium, which is essential for designing stable structures and mechanism under various loads. The drive shaft of the conveyor has two reaction forces where the bearings are. The shaft is loaded by its own weight, belt weight, and the weight of the cargo transported on the belt. That results in the bending moment of the shaft. You will use statics on daily basis, consciously or unconsciously. It does not matter if you are making a simple fixture or a complex assembly, you will be thinking about the forces and moments every time. Material science. Material science studies the properties and behaviors of materials to choose the right material for specific applications, ensuring durability and performance. We must consider the loads affecting the shaft and choose the proper material. Additionally, environmental effects and possible heat treatment must also be considered. Strength of materials. Strength of materials examines how materials deform and withstand loads, and that is crucial for designing structures and products that can endure operational stresses. So we use knowledge from statics to define the loads acting on the shaft. We use the knowledge of material science to define the proper material for the environments and the loads on the shaft. And now we can use knowledge of strengths of materials to calculate uh, stresses and deformations in the shaft and see if the shaft will deform and fail. So based on the results, we may change the material or geometry of the shaft. Often we will have to create uh, reports as the evidence of uh, proper calculation. Manufacturing basics introduces manufacturing processes, equipment and technology, laying the groundwork for understanding how mechanical components are made. This subject will teach you about processing operations like CNC machining, sheet metal forming, injection molding, 3D printing and similar. On the other hand, it will teach you about assembly operations like welding, adhesive bonding, fastening and similar. So this subject will teach you about which manufacturing processes are available. In the end, whatever you design has to be manufactured. So it makes sense for us to spend more time understanding what type of manufacturing processes we can uh, use to realize our design intent. So in this subject, I would focus more on understanding what is achievable with the different manufacturing processes. And I would not spend too much time on trying to understand which forces are acting on the tool uh, during the CNC machining. Uh, that is something that is a uh, responsibility from manufacturing engineer. Unless you end up designing CNC machines, then you have to understand the forces that are acting on the tool during the CNC machining. 
Now, back to conveyor and question for you. Should we form CNC machine or weld different segments of a drive shaft to get the desired shape? That is what understanding manufacturing processes will answer us. But first, you answer me. Heat transfer explores the movement of heat between physical systems, which is vital for designing efficient cooling systems and managing thermal loads in mechanical designs. So, as the drive shaft rotates and due to the friction it will heat up, as it's heating up, it will start to expand. And now the question is, if the system will still be the stable due to that expansion of the shaft. Understanding the heat transfer mechanism will allow us to predict and prevent heat-related problems in our designs. Engineering drawings. This subject teaches the creation and interpretation of technical drawings, an essential skill for communicating design intent and specification. When you start working as mechanical design engineer, you will use engineering drawings on a daily basis. You will either read them or create them. So, handling engineering documentation will be a big part of your work. Regarding engineering drawings, I would say that around about 80% of your work will be plus minus tolerances and for the master level would be GDNT or GPS according to ISO. This of course also depends on the industry that you will work in. Understanding engineering drawings will also be useful for your studies. To learn about shafts and different machine elements effectively, you will need to know how to read engineering drawings. And what is the better way to learn how to read them than to learn how to create them? This example of conveyor will be completely drafted in my upcoming course on engineering drawings. If you would like to learn more about it, the link is in description. And while you are down there, click that like button. So far we talked about mathematics, statics, material science, strengths of materials, manufacturing, heat transfer and engineering drawings. Let us now move to the next level. Machine elements covers the design and application of fundamental mechanical components such as gears, bearings and shafts, which are pivotal in building complex machinery. Let us now go back to our example of conveyor's drive shaft. Bearings support the shaft and allow it to rotate around its central axis. But how to connect them together, how to prevent the axial movement of the shaft, and which components we need to combine the rest of the system together, this subject will answer these questions. And even when you learn everything there is in the books, you will still be surprised how many elements are out there. Computer-aided design CAD focuses on using CAD software to visualize and modify designs, facilitating precise and efficient creation of parts and assemblies. A CAD model is an exact digital copy of the real object that will be manufactured. Any serious company developing new products is using CAD software as platform for efficient product development. This is also one of the things that you will use on everyday basis as a mechanical design engineer. Uh, you will create parts or components, you will create assemblies, and then you will create uh, engineering drawings for those parts and assemblies. Then uh, there will maybe some changes on the design, you will have to change the CAD model, update the drawings, update the revision of the drawing, do the engineering change uh, notification, and all of these things will be supported with your CAD software. And being efficient in using CAD software of your choosing or your company's choosing is something that will, uh, that will really help you in your career. Design for manufacturing DFM and design for assembly DFA. Emphasize designing products with ease of manufacturing and assembly in mind, reducing costs and improving product quality. So previously I mentioned manufacturing basics and in manufacturing basis, you will learn about uh, different manufacturing processes that you can utilize. And in DFM and DFA, you should learn about how to design for manufacturing and how to design for the assembly. And this is one of the 
I would say, crucial topics for mechanical design engineers. I'm not sure if your university will cover these topics, and if not, I would strongly suggest you to learn it on your own. I would say there are two approaches to it. So the first one is you learn about, you know, standard operations like CNC machining. There is high probability that you will encounter uh, CNC machining in your work. Uh, sheet metal forming, injection molding, 3D printing. So from the assembly side of it, I would say welding and fasteners and design for manual assembly operations and automatic assembly operations. And the second approach to learn DFM and DFA is based on your personal interest. If you have industry that you would like to work in, you could do the research on the requirements for mechanical design engineering jobs and then focus your learning on those areas. Let us now quickly jump into the example of drive shaft. So from the DFM perspective, we'll choose the material that is readily available and easy to machine, which reduces the cost and machining time. From the perspective of uh, DFA, we will ensure that we have features on the shaft that will make the alignment of the shaft easier during the assembly. Let us now move to the final level. Finite element method FEM utilizes advanced computational models to simulate and analyze the structural integrity of designs under various conditions, enhancing precision in engineering predictions. So we can use FEM to calculate stresses and deformations in shaft, for example, to check for stress concentration areas. Keep in mind that FEM results should always be checked with manual calculations or, in the case of complex assemblies and calculations, with the experiments. Product design and development focuses on the entire process of bringing a new product to market from conceptualization to final production, stressing innovation and practical application. So first, we need to understand the problem and the requirements of the conveyor customer. And then we will utilize a defined product development process for efficient and organized product development. Environmental design integrates environmental impact and sustainability principles into product design, ensuring solutions are eco-friendly and compliant with regulations. Sustainable design is getting more and more friction, and this is something that you should take into consideration. I believe that uh, companies in the future will definitely put more emphasis on this skill. Industrial design combines aesthetics, ergonomics and usability to enhance the consumer appeal and functionality of products. In the case of conveyor, we could look into the control interface, accessibility, emergency stop, guarding for safety and similar. Not every product that you design will require in-depth knowledge of every topic. The topics that I showed you previously are the main ones that could occur in most of the design engineering related jobs. However, depending on nature of the job you find, or depending on your interest, there are additional topics to focus on. Dynamics, kinematics and kinetics. Studies the motion of objects and the forces that cause them, which is essential for understanding moving systems in mechanical engineering. Thermodynamics. Thermodynamics deals with energy transformation and efficiency in systems, which is critical for designing engines, refrigerators, and HOC systems. Fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics analyzes the behavior of liquids and gases in motion, which is vital for designing piping systems, pumps, and aerodynamic components. Machine dynamics. Explores the forces and motions in machinery, essential for designing systems that operate smoothly and efficiently. Fracture mechanics. Investigates the propagation of cracks in materials and structures, a critical study for preventing catastrophic failures in engineering applications. Pneumatics and hydraulics. Examines the use of gas or liquid pressure to create motion or force, which is key in designing automation systems and machinery controls. Automatization. Focuses on use of control systems and information technologies to reduce human intervention in processes, which is essential for modern manufacturing and robotics. Please keep in mind that whatever your interests are and your desired career is, 
you have to pass all of the topics that your university puts in front of you in order for you to get your degree. Also, please keep in mind that these additional topics are also very, very important for mechanical design engineers. What I was trying to do here is to give you the core subjects that you will need to use for sure and then you take these additional topics that are part of your interest and put them as your own core topics. The thing is that mechanical engineering is so broad that it's very hard to find one fitted all solution. For example, if you are interested in designing excavators, in addition to the main topics I listed, you will also add fluid mechanics and hydraulics to your list of main topics to learn. I could talk about these topics for hours and hours and eventually I will. So make sure to smash that subscribe button to stay tuned. In the meantime, to set you up for the success, I have two playlists for you to watch.